board did have an exec session on Monday, April 8th to discuss personnel items and also this evening as well to discuss uh, personnel items. Do we have any announcements? Yes, we do. Set your alarms for Tuesday at 4 p.m., which is the earliest you can log into Skyward to view third grade, mar third grade marking period report cards. Eesh. Also, don't forget that spring four stars spring break this week. There'll be no school for students starting April 17th through the 22nd. And for those keeping track, we only have 37 days of school left. <laughs> Are you counting? I got it on the paper, so, <laughs> I mean. All right, public to be heard on agenda items only. We have uh, several action items on this evening. Do I have a motion? Second. Motion second, any comment? All in favor say aye. 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 Great, we have a presentation this evening with Dr. Uh, Patchkey from uh, Upper Province Elementary School. Good evening. Thank you for inviting us to join you this evening. One of the things that Springford is highly proud of is our music department, and all of this starts very young. Tonight, I'd like to introduce to you Sunny Huang, and Sunny is our instrumental teacher for fourth grade in the entire school district. She works tirelessly with beautiful young minds to start the seed at our level that ends up in an amazing place by the time they're in this building. So Sunny and her students are going to guide the presentation tonight. Thank you. Hi, I'm Sunny Huang. I teach all seven schools strings, violin, viola, cello, and bass. We have over 200 fourth grade string students this year. And so Mrs. McGranahan is helping me by teaching cellos for two schools, Oaks and Evans. Since we aim to give well-rounded education to students, so giving variety of music experience should be one of them. We all know the general benefit of the music education, but especially the string program has more profound, unique benefits in my point of view. I play many different instruments, but personally I think that string instruments are one of the most challenging instruments to learn to play from the beginning. Because not like other instruments, string instruments do not have the keys to, um, that play already tuned. Therefore, it requires good postures and intricate precision of fingers and warm, I mean, arm placement to play a single note that play the right frequency sounded tone. Not only that, strings on the string itself need to tune all the time. So evidently, this takes many hours of training, these fine physical, and mental motor skills and coordinations of left and right. This sounds so overwhelming, so therefore we don't start with our students this way. So we just simply start with gently touching left side of the face, putting on the shoulder, finding on your shoulder makes me happy. That way, <laughs> so um, they feel happy. They're not overwhelmed with all this information. So I show my students step-by-step -step instruction so they feel accomplished one point or another without overwhelming themselves. Sometimes some of the students like, uh, takes a little longer to understand, so they get frustrated. So I encourage them to stay, uh, saying they are doing something really hard, so this will take a while, like a tree or plant growing, and how much even professionals have to practice to be perfect for many, many hours. Also, they are on the right track because they are keep on trying. So I just help them focusing process and progress, not uh, what can do right away. I have up to eight classes a day, and I have up to six students in each class, grouping them by same instruments. 
Students are pulling out of the classes, except specials and target classes, about 30 minutes, once in a six day cycles. That means I meet them every eight to 14 days, about only two, three times a month, which is not very much at all. And each class schedule rotating so that they do not miss the same core classes. During these 30 minutes, students are getting their instruments and folders ready, and I take attendance and take homeworks, check homeworks, and tune their instruments, sometimes minor uh, repairs like I did earlier, her bridge came out. I do that constantly all the time. And the announcement, that means actually teaching time is less than 15, 20 minutes max. Therefore, retaining what they are learning, encouraging to be consistent and perseverance, and mostly wants to come to their classes is my main goal when I'm teaching, which is challenging yet much needed lesson to learn for the students, especially in this instant gratification era. And in order for me to teach them during those um, 18, 14, 8 to 14 days between the lessons, I use many, uh, I had to make sure it is memorable and give them a good motivations. So I used many props, put the dots on their fingers, and I put their stuffed animal on their uh, instruments so they have good postures, and um, Mr. Sunny face on their bows so they have a good bowing. All those props so they can go home and memorize what they need to do. And also I do a lot of visual prog process so they can see their pro progress using uh, taekwondo belt so they can pass each song so they how much they're learning. Also, um, use all the good motivations, giving them tickets so they can get incentives after they get many tickets of many days of practices and getting ready for the classes. And also, I use, use a lot of keywords so they remember the postures for them to remember. Um, snowboard, feet, and like, like I said earlier, uh, instruments on my shoulder, on their shoulder makes Mrs. Sunny happy, kind of things. So they can remember right away when I say something. And first couple of months, they learn postures and how to take care of instruments so they can have a proper posture to make the better sound. And also I send a lot of emails with helpful YouTube video links and handouts of pictures and informations. And then they are, are learning notes and bowing a few months later, and um, bowing them playing and reading music skills I added. Students needed to learn to coordinate and multitasking, putting two hands together like partner dancing. Like I said earlier, unlike other instruments, the strings have a specific placement for each note like an archery target practice. Up to this point, while I'm emphasizing this aspect of playing, students learn to be patient with themselves because this learning process takes a long time to master. Therefore, they need to be disciplined about following directions and to be regular practice to play a song perfectly. And starting from February, orchestra meets in the morning before school on their lesson day to prepare for the concert as a group. So students learn orchestra etiquette and rules and how to follow conductor. So, um, also give opportunity for a better player to be challenged by playing harder parts and for others to enjoy participating with the music group, making music groups. And I have a five students today to uh, show what we learned so far and get ready for the concert. And I will introduce them. Can you say your name? Yes. I'm Brooke Reinger. I'm Samantha Offner. I'm Sophia Germany. I'm Marley Ant Kanich. I am Clayton Heinzman. You're gonna play first and then they're gonna share the experience with you.
Sí. I like playing the cello because it has a very deep sound. Deep sounds always make me feel soothing. I have my cello in my room and I practice almost every night before I go to sleep. It feels peaceful and helps me go to sleep. I think Miss Sunny is the best music teacher I could wish for. She's very humorous. When someone makes a mistake, Sunny helps the student with the mistake in a way that makes everyone laugh. And I like the class because I get closer to my friends and get to know other people better. I like violin because it is fun to learn something that not everybody is familiar with. I also like it because you get to do concerts. Concerts are a good way to get yourself out there as a violin player and a good way to work out confidence. It's also fun because Miss Sunny is a really nice and funny teacher. I make new friends too. I like the class because we have a, such a great teacher. Also, in October, I had no clue how to play the violin, let alone play it with a bow. But now I can play Baby Shark, Mozart's Melody, and more. The classes are amazing because even if we don't understand something, we can have an extra class on that same day. Playing the violin is great because once you get the hang of it, it's all worth it when you hear the music. And knowing I, that I made it happen feels so good. At first, learning the violin was pretty hard, but Miss Sunny made learning fun and is helping me become a better violinist. I love the way it sounds, and I really like the songs we get to play. Also, I really like the other kids I practice with. We all get along and have a great time with Miss Sunny. I love my violin because Miss Sunny helps us practice by going step by step when we need some help. Practicing at home is so much fun because while I practice my siblings like to dance and sing. I love my violin because my mom used to play it too and I love the high notes. I just wanted to say, I didn't make them say I'm great. <laughs> they wrote their own words. And overall, my goal for fourth grade uh, string program is offer fun experience for the students personally, socially, and musically. And I like to promote good habits of hard work, discipline, self-control, being responsible and be a good team player, which is beneficially academically and to be a successful citizen for the future. Also give more opportunity to develop personal refined motor skills and combination skills of physicals and mental. Students, students feel also accomplished and confident as well as having fun making music and learning more songs with the peer groups while they are forming new friendship and bonds together. This will lay and build a good foundation of lifetime enjoyment of music playing and personal growth as a musician, as a lifetime learner. Also, I like to, um, I have a goal for to help increase the range of school music curriculums so that more students can get involved in music study. Thank you very much. So to end, uh, we place it back to the school board to say thank you. Thank you for supporting the arts and for starting this love at such a young age. It matters not only, of course, to the product you see and enjoy every, at, here at the high school, but to their entire lives. Thank you. Before the kids leave, I have a quick question. Okay. So when my kids started in fourth grade, I don't think we did the strings on the ends. What mm -hmm. are those strings for? The blue and the green, what are they for? The ribbons? The ribbons? Yeah. Oh, I call them taekwondo belt, string taekwondo belt. Every time they pass certain song, they get the color ribbon just like uh, martial arts. Oh, So they okay. give them really great motivation. So they've learned the songs, they get yes, the strings. Yes, so they have to pass, they have to play perfectly. 
Am I right, kids? You have to play perfectly. Very good. Yes. <laughs> so they practice and practice. And nobody gets to the black belt yet, but they are working on it. Awesome. Yes. I love it. Yes. Yeah. And are you guys excited for the string jamboree? Yeah. <laughs> it's going to be fun. That's any other questions? So one of, uh, you mentioned the String Jamboree, which is coming up. Um, the Strings program started in Springford. I think we started, it's 10 years now in the making. Uh, or it's been, it started with uh, probably, yeah, throughout the entire district, I think we had maybe, um, close to 100 students, <laughs> if that, when we first started the strings program. And um, it, this, this program, and you know, when we talk about what makes Spring for one of the top districts in, in the state and why we're recognized uh, in many areas is because of the things like this, beyond just the curriculum. Um, but last year at the String Jamboree, which that I think is, this is like the seventh year mm -hmm. of, I think, the String Jamboree, it's where they, they, they bring all of the kids that participate in the string program from fourth grade all the way to high school. Um, and one of the first years we did the string jamboree, I think in the orchestra, at the high school level, there was like six, six or seven kids that, partic that played that day. Um, last year alone in the strings program, uh, and I, all the kids that participated from fourth to, to, through 12th grade, we had over 550 kids mm -hmm. that are participating throughout the district in the program. This is, it's a, it's a, it's a big investment from the, from the district, but this is uh, so important uh, and why we stand behind it wholeheartedly. Um, several years ago when the district was facing almost a $12 million uh, deficit that we had to make some very serious decisions about what we needed to do. One of the things that was put on the table to cut was the strings program. And a few of us stood up wholeheartedly and, 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 and basically um, just yeah, <laughs> saying it nicely, we, there was no way that we were allowing that to happen. Um, and that, and that, this program just continues to grow. The, the strings jamboree started in the high school auditorium. We had to move it into the gymnasium and last year, we actually had to do two shows so we could get all the parents uh, and, and family members in to be able to see the kids perform. Mm -hmm. Now, just keep in mind, the high school gymnasium holds 1,200, uh, <laughs> whatever you want to call it, 1,200 people. So just think about that, that we have to do two shows to get everyone in because we can't hold 1,200 people for one show. Um, so it's an amazing program, and thank you for bringing them this evening. You're doing a great job, uh, you. wonderful job. Mm -hmm. And the kids did an amazing job this evening as well. But um, it's just, it's, it's something that we're extremely proud of here as, as, as a district. And, and uh, we, we look for this to continue to grow. I, I know that we're going to hit, uh, well, if you have, would you say 200 kids Over at fourth grade? Over 200 students. Wow. Are. Then I, I have to see, I, I can't wait to see the, the numbers this year, but we have to be at 600 or, or uh, I don't know if we got past 600 or not, but we have to be, you know, based on 200 kids. Uh, because I think last year was like a hundred, only 150 kids mm -hmm. at the fourth grade level. So that, that's just amazing. So great job. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I, Mrs. Wong, I just also want to, I really want to thank you also, you know, again, I, just this past week we were, Springford was recognized once again um, as one of the best communities in music education. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you are a big part of that because you are one of the kind of base foundation, you know, for these young guys um, who come up in our music programs. And, you know, for us to sit here and continue to support those programs and, and continue to um, encourage, you know, the, the district to, to grow those programs and offer those programs, you know, it really comes back to you. Um, who, who plants that seed. So thank you, and thank, and thank you. you guys. You were awesome tonight. Yes. Thank you. All right, great. Okay, let's uh, jump into committee, uh, committee reports, uh, curriculum technology. Sorry, next week. Okay. Ooh, you caught me off guard. <laughs> well, let me just, uh, so we'll do finance. Let me just bring that up.
We met. It was good. It's all good. <laughs> yes. Okay. Finance committee met Tuesday, April 9th, district office. Uh, as always, we started off with uh, reviewing the, the, the monthly uh, reports to go through uh, where we are at this point in time. Um, Oh, I'm sorry. Before we got into monthly reports, we did have a. We started this last year. Uh, we had an, uh, invited the tax collectors in uh, to the finance meeting just to kind of touch base with them because uh, the tax bills will be going out in June or July, and we just wanted to uh, bring them in, go through a few things, make sure everything's working seamlessly between the, the tax collectors and and uh, our business operations, and uh, uh, you know, a few questions here or there, but. Um, nothing out of the ordinary and I think that we have a great working relationship with our tax collectors um, and uh, so uh, we will hopefully will continue to do that in the future just bringing them in and, and go through some things but uh, um, it was it was a really good uh, meeting and then we did get into the monthly reports uh, as, as always at, at this point in time uh, from a budget standpoint we are we still are on target. Um, you know, our revenues and expenses are are pacing very nicely. Our uh, liquidity in the district right now um, is where we are normally at this point in time, uh, as far as money that cash on hand. So um, we're very happy about that. Uh, the revenue detail we're 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 tracking slightly ahead of estimates, mainly due to timing of receipts. Uh, but we are still looking at about $20 million remains in collectibles for the fiscal year. Expenditures, uh, again, we're, we're pacing uh, as, as budgeted. Uh, assessments are up about $5 million prior uh, from the month. Uh, was, it was slower over the winter, but it seems to be uh, picking up right now. Uh, total assessments at this point are $4 billion, uh, $38 million. Uh, we are trying to march towards that 4.5 billion, right, Mr. Fink? <laughs> no. <laughs> but uh, that's a good thing that uh, assessed values are, are rising. Uh, there's new development that's going on, and, and uh, the, you know the district is, is uh, experiencing growth overall. So that's that's great. Uh, some other reports that we looked at: the real estate transfer taxes have beat the budget number, um, so um, that's a good thing. And we are actually looking at uh, well, we are increasing that uh, budget number next year uh, up a little bit from what the projections are uh, over the last couple of years. So we are uh, we are increasing that earned income tax by about three hundred thousand dollars. The uh, self-funded insurance is performing uh, on target. Uh, Rates are coming in relatively flat. Uh, or I don't want to say flat. There's no such thing as flat, but there, there's not major changes to what the health insurance overall rates will be. Uh, so most of the stuff will be status quo, which is good. Um, and uh, I, let's see, that's pretty much that. Food services, uh, the the food program, the the lunch programs. We are in the black. Uh, although we're, we're down about a third from the prior year, lunch sales are down about 1,700 lunches compared to uh, last year. Hence is why we will get into the food services update in a second. And then finally, the high school expansion project. Uh, once again, uh, there are no additional change orders. Um, so we are still where we were um, last month. Uh, in fact, one of the change orders we proposed, and Mr. Hunter could help me, but was about a $20,000 change order, but it's we we, see, we, we realized about $8,000 back, or what was the actual numbers? Uh, it was uh, $16,000, and we're getting half of that back, so it's about $8,200 coming back to us. Right. So that's a, that's a good thing. Um, project is continuing on budget and we will also it's on, on, on time as well food services update as we talked about for a few months now we are looking at ways to uh, enhance or, or update our food operations uh, mr. Fink uh, there were six uh, put out and there were six companies at the pre-bid meeting and five proposals came back so far uh, and he, he and his staff are going through 
uh, each of those proposals uh, in detail to figure out what the next steps would be. Um, we did talk about the targeted changes for the high school calf in the upcoming school year. Uh, and he feels that, uh, Mr. Fink still feels that we will be able to implement some changes uh, as what our goal was uh, moving into the start of next year, as well as having some menu redesigns that will hopefully uh, increase some of food sales at, at, the, at that level. Um, Yeah, we just, uh, the next part was just, we are on target as far as those updates are concerned. Uh, so we, he'll be going through all those documentation, all those documented those proposals, and we'll be bringing that back to finance next month, and then hopefully we'll be bringing forward a recommendation to the board. Uh, budget update, at, and we will be having a budget presentation next week by Mr. Fink. Um, but right now we are looking at a budget gap of about 2.6%. Uh, tax change. We are still uh, seeing if there's anything that we can do, uh, which that, well, let me, let me rephrase that. It's a 2.6% change. Confuse me on these meeting minutes. The end, the end result is that right now we're proposing or will be pro proposing probably about a 2.3% uh, tax increase uh, for the upcoming uh, budget. Um, there are some uh, recommendations that uh, that have been uh, put in by administration, as I mentioned, uh, uh, new personnel and that, that stuff is will be in the budget. Um, I, I don't know that's pretty much it. That was uh, finance committee. Any questions? Okay, great. Let me go to property real quick. So property met right after that, district office, old business. We did go through the high school expansion project, um, and which included a progress to date, construction scheduling and change order tracking. Overall project completion is at 70% uh, through April 9th, while on time and on budget. We love those numbers, we love that. Um, we reviewed the Ram Stadium sewer feasibility progress. That's uh, changing out the, the current restrooms are at Ram Stadium, the baseball stadium, and actually uh, they're glorified as talked about before, they're basically a glorified holding tank, and we're looking at uh, actually running a sewer uh, to those uh, to those bathrooms and, and tapping into the, the system that's on this on this district site. Um, and uh, so we are moving forward. They uh, the survey drawings are complete, expected to have finished mechanical and utility site plans in approximately next 30 days. So by the next meeting, uh, the recommendation will be coming from uh, property as far as uh, how we will proceed forward with that, with that project. Um, we did have a discussion. Uh, we've been talking about this for the last couple of years about the, uh, changing out the scoreboard at McNally Stadium. Uh, uh, we watched a, a video of what the board will look like and what potential advertising opportunities will be on the board. Uh, we had, for last month, if the board remembers, we had a, a sample board that was displayed outside for us to look at. Um, and you'll see in the agenda this evening that uh, finally at this point the recommend, there is a recommendation coming forward from property that we move forward with that. We discussed a recommendation or discussed administration's recommendation to approve the ICS Consulting Inc. for a district right feasibility conditioning assessment. Great news on that. Mr. Hunter was originally figuring about $100,000 overall projected cost, uh, but he's actually working with uh, ICS Consulting and they feel they'll be able to uh, do the entire project for $18,000. So, we're really excited about that, and that will also be on the agenda. Old business. Uh, so they're uh, I'm trying to. So this was the, the management of aggressive behavior is scheduled for leadership. Uh, 
the Corbett Inn in Norristown, PA. Um, that's, that was our police update. Uh, we, there was another stop the bleed, or there will be another stop the bleed training schedule for five, um, for May 21st. Uh, there are, Spring Forward Police will be going through firearms training um, in May and in June at the Marlboro Police Department. The police manual uh, that uh, Chief Boyer has been working on has been shared and, uh, and is being uh, created, uh, it's being created, it was created and is out for review. Um, there are several safe to say um, tips that we're continually looking into. Uh, I'm proud to say that we are one of the best reaction times in the county and probably the state as far as when these tips come in and how fast we'll be able to respond to them. And one of the reasons that is is because Spring Forward has been a leader in, um, in, in creating, you know, an on-site police department. Uh, and we, you know, as we continue to grow that out, we're, we're very excited with the progress to date. Uh, and we have several uh, other school districts that have been in contact with Chief, uh, Chief Boyer understanding how and what we're doing here at Spring Forward. So again, we're, you know, we've, we've done this for several years. We are, you know, leading the initiative and in, as far as how to do it right. And we're excited about that. Uh, other, from an operation standpoint, uh, we did ex talk about accepting Oaks Elementary, Oaks Elementary Home and School, the donation of playground equipment, and all that's been worked out, and we'll be moving forward with that, and that will be on the agenda. Uh, we discussed uh, reprogramming the HVAC controls in schools with four pipe heating and cooling system, which will allow for significant increase in dehumidification throughout the school. Administration recommends that uh, we, we pilot the program at Oaks Elementary first and see uh, how that conversion works out. Uh, we discussed a replacement of three pieces of grounds equipment, which is part of the budget. Uh, so we didn't uh, get into much detail regarding that. And uh, we are looking at um, the district office HVAC system. Um, unfortunately, when that district office was built several years ago, um, why the, the then board and the architecture came up with the uh, HVAC system that they have in there, it's, it's rudimentary. Uh, and it's just, it's just ridiculous. And it's a system that's uh, on, basically coming to end of life and we need to look at uh, replacing that, uh, redesigning and replacing that whole system. Uh, and there will be logistical issues, of course, when you're doing a, a, a project like that and potentially moving all district operations out of the district office for a few weeks while that work is going on. Uh, some other things that are occurring uh, within emergency management, they're setting up, uh, secretary, setting up a secretary staff training for 12-month employees to give guidelines emergency events, develop, um, developing police officer evaluation process, developing annual training schedule per Act 44, uh, attending seminars, uh, working with uh, the nuclear power plant and their, and their, their annual drill, uh, as well as uh, possible disaster training exercises with uh, uh, Limerick uh, Police Department. Um, and well, as I mentioned, our, our school police uh, is moving towards actually being a state model that will be potentially replicated by many districts uh, throughout Pennsylvania. So it's something for us to be extremely proud of. So the action items I, uh, I talked about that will be on the agenda and the meeting ended uh, a little late this time. I think it was 8.35 or 8.40. Any questions? I have a question. So um, I'll, I'll get to my question in one second because while I was listening to your report, I came up with a second question. I'm going to start with that one. Um, it sounded like there were a, a lot of um, discussion around security, the officers, the training, um, and I agree that that's all, yeah, like very important. But how does that how has that become that it's fallen under property? It, and maybe maybe it's time like uh, that we start to think about 
where that actually belongs because I agree that maybe like monthly updates to discuss action items. Um, I know that you, we can discuss security issues in executive session now, but j just some sort of, you know, if you're getting monthly report out on that, I think maybe we should start to think of a better format for it than property committee. Well, and I, I mean, that's a great question. The reason why it ended up under property was because most of the security stuff will be related to facilities. Yeah, and I think it started with our, we did that district-wide like assessment right. where we, and, and so it kind of stemmed from that, but I think maybe now that it's, like you said, we're, 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 we have a much more, uh, you know, robust police force for our school district now. Um, maybe it's worth thinking about some sort of like proper format or, you know, formal format for reporting out or, or that type of thing. Well, it would have to. I mean, the, there is a for, proper format. I mean, it's 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 all part of. It's like we have curriculum and technology together, so that we have police. It's and definitely facilities. not curriculum or technology. Well, no. The reason I'm because well, think of it this way: the the stuff that we're just a lot of the stuff that's going on right now is really one time, as far as the manuals and stuff like that. Once that's done, majority of stuff that's going to be occurring is really related to facilities and that's why we we put it I mean we could create another committee I mean that's that's what you're if that's I, I'm not sure I just thought there was a whole like subsection of the of property that was a, circled around that and I think it's important and valuable but I just wondering if uh, I mean why not under finance we're spending money on it like why you know well, just I, I it just look I mean I was, we, we, well, no. I mean, it's it's we could we have one at one at, we could we could put it under a different committee, or we could create its own committee, um, or we just you know keep property it. and security. We could right. call property facility property or actually call facilities and slash security. I mean, you really don't need property and facilities. You it just say, it just popped into my head. I was like, wow, there was well, a no. Whole I mean, it's a it's, it's a good up. question, but majority of the stuff moving forward is really going to be around. It's going to be around security in the facilities. That's that's why we. If you're asking why it's there, that's why we did it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I know, and that, I think that was like I right. said how it all started. We right. did but that we could, district wide assessment. We, yeah, we could certainly in the future look at creating another committee or or whatever. I mean. Uh, yeah. Um, so my real question that I originally thought of before that popped into my head was. Um, a couple months ago, I think we, it might have even been longer than a couple months ago, we had discussed uh, the sign at McNally Stadium. And I, I guess m back then my thoughts were, well, if it's not broke, don't fix it. And yeah, the scoreboard, the sign, sorry. Uh, and I mean, personally, I think it's very nostalgic to one we have. and. In, the new proposed sign, because the first one I think didn't pass, is exponentially more expensive than the, I think the, the initial one. No, it's the other way around. Yeah, I think it was like maybe it, we were looking at like a fifteen thousand dollar sign for was it the baseball stadium or something? There was some sign we wanted to fix. And I just think this is so much money for a sign. It's not a scoreboard. A scoreboard. Right. So oh. the the first scoreboards that we were looking at when we started this were somewhere around three hundred thousand dollars. The 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 we did replace. There was a replacement of the scoreboard at at the Ram Stadium, which is a baseball stadium, which was I don't Mickey. I don't know if you remember the price. I want to say somewhere around fifty or sixty thousand uh, dollars, because I mean it's a lot smaller. This this started a property a couple of years ago because there was starting to become a concern that the board is coming to an end of life. To replace that board as it is today is about an eighty to ninety thousand dollar cost. So and it's getting harder and harder to to, to maintain it. A majority of those parts aren't aren't even in existence anymore. It's an old board. So that's why I said we've been looking at this for a couple of years now, and, and, we, and I, I believe it was Robert found his company that came in and gave a proposal that was basically half of what the original board was. It was never $15,000. We put, a, we, put a, a football, we put a sign, it was donated for the youth football, which was like $10,000, which is less, like a 
you know, a third of 25% of what this is. So uh, that has nowhere near the functionality that this board has. Um, but no, I mean, it's, 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 get, it's, re, it's getting to a point where something has to be done. So it's, that's kind of where we're at. And that's why we we we've been talking about this a property for a while now. And it's like, we're, when, we, when these numbers came in, it's like, well, this is probably the time to do it because we don't want to be in a situation where when the, when the, if the board goes, you know, then what do we do? We could. We could definitely get volunteers to hold up numbers. But that's where that's how this all started a couple of years ago because it was it was getting to the point where the board was it was coming to an end of life. And and even though, like I said, that we looked at replace if we want to replace that board, the cost of it is is, is pretty significant. I, I remember with this board you talked about the, um, kind of selling the ad space and, and that type of thing. Have you, has there been any kind of assessment done to evaluate the, the type of revenue we'd be looking at and, and how, you know, how much per year and, and you know, because that could help offset, I mean, that would have to, that would help offset the cost of the board. And I know that that was part of the conversation. I just didn't know if there was ever a number that, that was looked at or a target or range or anything like that. No, what we have um, given considerable thought to uh, businesses that we would be able to uh, approach with advertising opportunities on that board, um, but I really haven't deployed our resources to look into that. Um, we could have Colleen add it to the use of facilities policy. Oh, stop it. No, thank you. <laughs> the, 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 the point of the board is, is that's what we, I mean, there's, there's opportunity to significantly sell advertising throughout the, around the board. I mean, there's so many ways we could do it. Um, and quite honestly, if we actually take that initiative on, the board should pay for itself. Um, it's, you know, in reality, huh? It has to get done. It, it just, right, we just have to do it. But to, to sell advertising, look, on a, on a, on a Home game of football, of nor a home football game, we usually average about four to five thousand people, um, and then all the other events alone, the thousands of people. So yeah, it, I just didn't know if the company itself kind of even gave it. You know, no, they, no, they don't. The company doesn't get any into incentive, that. like you know, hey, you could raise up to this amount. You know. I think either we go with the board or we don't. I wouldn't recommend us trying to determine any um, payback. No, I was just curious vendors. if it had been done. Yeah. Because that's an unknown. I had the phone on. Mark wants to speak. Go ahead, Mark. Yeah, I, I'm not in favor of spending $140,000 on a new school board. I think we should use the one until it needs to be replaced. We already get some advertisement. I, I, I think that's kind of pie in the sky, getting advertisement to pay for the board. And that's not really the function of uh, really high school football games is to inundate the people there with advertisements to get enough of that in the rest of our life. So I'm, in the future, any kind of scoreboard that has video capabilities is only going to get cheaper. So I think we should just keep what we have when that needs to be replaced and we look at replacing that with whatever options are at the time. Any other questions? What's the life, I think I asked this before, but what's the life expectancy, the life cycle? The, uh, we have a seven year um, parts and labor warning with that uh, based on the usage. Um, it's, it's, you know, anywhere, uh, depending on how much usage it gets, 10 to 12 years. So is it true that we have not really tried to get anybody else to pay for this board, anybody who be, we could put their advertising on the board? Because I've, I've been to talks at the uh, Pennsylvania School Board Association meeting where school districts have presented uh, their programs where they actually got companies to buy their boards, and boy, $140,000 for knowing what the score of the football game is. It's... Uh, that's uh, that's not uh, chicken feed. 
as we used to say in the agrarian communities. The, the potential is there for us to, to be able to sell the advertising. You know, like I said, when we were looking at this, it, it was, you know, we, we could most certainly sit and do nothing, and when the board dies in the middle of a football season or whatever it may be, then we do nothing. I mean, it's we looked at this for, for several years, and the recommendation from property is it's, it's time to move forward. Well, I just think we should have a community organization that goes around and tries to raise money to pay for these things without it coming out of our educational budget. Any other questions? Assistant Superintendent Report. Thank you, Mr. DeBella. First, I'd like to share that the policy meeting that was scheduled for tomorrow uh, has been moved to next Tuesday at 6 p.m. in the high school uh, faculty cafeteria. Also, um, as everyone knows, we're into the fourth market period now, and uh, many students and parents are shifting their attention to the summer, so don't forget about Spring Ford's famous Cool School. Again, the summer courses offer fun summer activities for students complete, completing grades K, uh, K through six with a focus on enrichment, arts, and sports. There are three weeks of Cool School this summer, and you can choose to attend one, two, or all three weeks of the program. The courses are taught by some of your favorite Spring Ford teachers and are open for, and the classes are now open for registration. All information is on our main district webpage under parents and then Cool School. Next Wednesday, the 24th, starting at 4 o'clock, many of our Spring Ford uh, teachers and administrators, including Dr. Gooden, will be participating in the Ice for Autism event by helping to scoop water ice or readers water ice in both Royersford and Collegeville. Um, as you know, each year, uh, Readers donates a portion of the sales as well as all proceeds from the puzzle pieces that get donated directly back to Spring Ford to support um, our in-house Spring Ford students. So if you place it on your calendar to try to support Readers next week, it's a great time. And then finally, uh, if you attend only one after-school event this, this spring, please make sure that you attend the unified track and field meet that Spring Ford students will be, be, will be participating on on Thursday, May 9th. The unified track and field team is made up of student athletes, both with and without disabilities, on the same team, and the experience for them is life-changing. On May 9th, the Spring Ford unified track and field team will meet at Coach McNally Stadium at 3.30 p.m. to go against the track teams from Abington and Springfield. Many, if not all, of our sp spring sports teams stop practice for a portion of the time, sit in the stands, cheer on the unified team as they compete, and again, it's an unbelievable experience to be out and supporting the students. So it's one of the highlights of the spring that you don't want to miss. So we hope to see you in the stadium, and if you'd like to volunteer, Mr. Krakauer is looking for people to uh, assist with the javelin throw and uh, many other activities that are going on. Last year, I ended up uh, raking the pit after all the long jumps. I would suggest not doing that in a suit. <laughs> It was a great time. Okay, solicitor's report. Uh, just uh, very briefly, I, I believe last month we had mentioned um, to the board that our office was working with Chief Boyer as relates to the um, handbook and policies um, that will be brought forward at some point uh, to the board. Um, in, in doing that, one of the, the issues that I saw arising was the need to make sure that our ever-increasing um, Police Department understood the expectations of school districts as relates to legal obligations beyond just the criminal end. So over the next several weeks um, uh, with our office and then with the police side and the administrative side, making sure that everybody knows the expectations of, of both departments as relates to say Title IX, criminal investigations, how information can be shared. Because there are certain things that we can get from them but they might not be able to share with us and vice versa. So it, it's making sure that, that departments are, are aligned in that regard. That's one issue. The other issue, and uh, this is something that I think will be coming forward either in the omnibus school code revisions in June or maybe as a standalone, will be ever increasing momentum for a charter school law change. And in particular, as relates to our cybers and how we potentially can avoid costs in the future should we have our own cyber. Um, Senator Mario Scavello of the Northeast, a Republican, just um, became a co-sponsor to the Senate bill. 
which clearly shows that there is uh, additional momentum towards what could be a, a fairly sizable change in the next 60 days or so. And that's been a big push, uh, you know, just with, through PSBA, through, you know, all the legislative um, entities and organizations. I mean, you're seeing it in everywhere. It's, it's everywhere. Um, so there's bills both in the House and, and the Senate. Um, I think the Senate bill is the one that's a little bit more, <laughs> uh, you know, if you are um, cyber charter school, you know, if your cyber school is, you know, similar or close in content that, you know, well, it's very judgmental. It is, it's, it's vague. <laughs> very so vague. So it'll, it'll be interesting to see how that's, that's flushed out both in the statute and then how it's right. interpreted. The house is a little tighter in terms of that, in terms of the language. <clears throat> well, our program does have a solid foundation, maybe a little tweak to, or two here or there based upon how that shakes out, but we're in good shape uh, with Spring Forward Virtual to, uh, to replicate, and I would say is in competition directly or comparable to the, uh, the other programs that are out there, and obviously being stronger academically as well. My takeaway from reading some of those is that it's going to be very subjective as far as cyber charter schools and what you have in your district versus what's being offered outside, and it's it, nothing. Nothing will eventually change. Well, what I what will be interesting to see is how that uh, you know who oversees that. Will that be PDE doing it, and then ultimately will the standard change from administration to administration depending on the view of charter. So it's going to be which is how the charter school law is structured right now. You have the charter school appeals board and CAB. You know always change their view depending on who m might be in the state house so it's that's uh to be determined okay any other questions okay meeting minutes a and b any questions personnel a through m finance a through H. Property A through E. Programming curriculum A and B. Other business uh, A through C. I, can I, I will make a comment on that one just because I'm sitting in Vern Pettit's old seat and uh, I, I just, I need to say that thank you to the Oaks Elementary yes. Parent Teacher Association for that donation. It is organizations like that that help uh, supplement everything that, that we do here. Appreciate it. One more thing on, on Oaks. Once that's installed, who takes the responsibility for maintenance? We do. There's a there's a funds that are actually put as part of the donation that uh, Robert was a twenty percent that is used for for maintenance and upkeep of the of those playground equipments uh, throughout the district every time it's donated. Any other questions? Board comment. I'd just like to make one brief comment here. I, I hope I can express the feelings of the Springford community to express our sympathies to the French people and the people of Paris and the loss of their, the heart of their city. In my uh, elementary French, I want to say, nous sommes très tristes. Uh, any other board comment? We do have in front of uh, us. I have one. <clears throat> Throughout the community, Upper Providence is township. It's starting a paving program. And normally we would love to see them do paving in the summertime, but they've decided to do the paving, some ADA ramp replacement now, which will definitely impact the routes. It's, some of it's happened in, in my community, and it's, it's impacting just day-to-day -day driving. 
So I think we should reach out, and I've reached out to the township manager already to try to get a schedule that would help Laura going forward for the next couple of months. Thank you, Mr. Jackson. Okay, in, in front of us, the, the board this evening has a red resolution from that was developed by PA School Works. Uh, not that we need to take action on this this evening. Please take it with you, and, and Mark will get you a copy of it. Um, it's basically a resolution to be sent to the General Assembly uh, talking about adequately investing in uh, the public schools and students. Um, Pennsylvania ranks 46 among the, among the 50 states when it comes to state subsidies. Um, so this is another initiative. Um, I've been on the board <coughs> 10 years now, and I don't know how many of these resolutions related to uh, adequately investing in public schools that have been put in front of us. We passed and sent to Harrisburg, and you know we could just add this to the list of being supportive of, of the group, but um, right now Pennsylvania doesn't even have the means to, to be able to adequately uh, fund uh, education um, throughout the state of Pennsylvania. So we shall see. The other thing, I, I do have a question for uh, that I haven't heard in a while. I was wondering whatever happened to it uh, at the uh, extracurricular. At the end of the uh, sports seasons, we had coaches' reviews. I'm assuming that's still going on. Do we know? When you say coaches' reviews, do you mean like the, the students do the survey? Right. That feedback is looped back to the yeah. athletic director and principal. Yes. yes. Okay. And then Mickey will follow up and do an evaluation on the on the coach based upon his his whatever rubric he follows. Okay. I just yes. I just want to ask. I haven't heard anything lately about it, so I just want to make sure it's still going on. Um, well, that's a, well, that's true. That's true. That's a good thing, right? Uh, the other thing is is that. Um, we, the, if the board remembers, we did have our retreat the end of January or so, and we, there was many things that, as we as we start to get past uh, the budget cycle, I think it's we should really start looking at uh, some of the stuff that we talked about. Uh, there was some really good stuff in there about, um, you know, about education and curriculum and stuff like that that we that should really become the next objectives uh, for some of the committees and that first start focusing on. Um, so I'll, I'll send that out. I'll send out the, all the notes that we had to the board, so we could start prioritizing that. And I, you know, I like for us to have a brief discussion next week uh, about some of those things, so we could start plunking them into where we'd like them uh, to happen. Um, and then the last thing, uh, interesting enough, Mr. Dressler or Dr. Dressler. We were contacted, uh, Dr. Gordon and myself were contacted to meet with State Representative uh, Schusterman. Or Schusterman, right? Yeah. Right? We were supposed to meet with her on Friday at 2 o'clock. And lo and behold, she never showed up. Really? Even after, she, the, after her office confirmed that we were going to have the meeting. Well, uh, I'm going to have to call her and give her what. Yeah, well, whatever. I mean, it's, you know. This is this goes back to what I said before about they put themselves at this high level, and they think that they could just. I took off from work. We, you know, we had this plan. We were going to meet. Never showed up. Not even a courtesy call to the point where we were calling multiple times, and we finally got through to one of her offices, and then they gave us their BS statement of, well, oh, will, we forgot to tell her. I mean, come on. After, after I will talk to her and tell her. It's not acceptable as a state representative. You're going to reach out to a school district and want to meet with us, and we take the time and schedule it and then blow us off. It's not acceptable. I don't care who they are. I agree. I will, I will try to deal with it as effectively as I can. We're not that important, Tom. Huh? Well, We're apparently not. not. But look, we didn't re they reached out to us, which I was very excited about because, you know, I said I would love for us to, you know, for us to reach out, and we were there and waiting. Right, we get the invitation. They got the follow-up to make sure that it was confirmed that they were, she was coming. We're sitting in Dr. Gooden's office, 2 o'clock, 2.10, 2.15, 2.20. Nothing. We finally got through. I think it was like quarter to, quarter, 20 to 23 or quarter to 3. We finally got through to somebody, and the response is, oh, we forgot to tell her. Come on. 
Yeah, yeah seriously. They, they, I mean, come on. They really seriously totally think we're going to fall for that nonsense. I think it was, I think it was embarrassing for, for her, um, and it, it's, it's a, basically a disgrace. I don't have I time agree. to sit around waiting for somebody. I agree. Any other comment? Uh, go ahead. Many of you know that we had one of our employees pass away, and um, she was an instructional assistant for us, Deb Huber, and um, I know that uh, it impacted our intermediate school this morning, and uh, it was quite a shock. And so I'd ask just that we would have a, just a moment of silence for her uh, and her family. Thank you. Any other comment? Any public comment? I'm hoping this is a real short question. About you need to state your name for oh, the, I'm sorry. and your address. Uh, Diane Sullivan, 194 Palmer Place, Linfield, Pennsylvania. And I just had one question about the scoreboard that was undiscussed tonight. What about um, the tracking of the timing and the placement for the track and field team? Because there's no board, there's nothing. You know, when you go, you really don't know who finished and what time and who placed first, second, third um, for the two competing teams, or sometimes it's a divisional. So I was wondering if the scoreboard is just for football or it's going to provide support for the other athletic teams. It's, it's actually a, a multi-pulpers board. We, we, we actually could program and accommodate all the, all the sports, right, Mr. Robert, right? Yes. Okay. So it's, it's fully programmable and functional for all, for all the sports. And so, yes. Okay. Thank you. Is the idea actually to do that? Yeah. We'll, then we'll have to hire scorekeepers for every event? Well, you still need scorekeepers. We, we still use them anyway. Yeah. They still have to input it. No. They're, okay. Any, any other public comment? Huh? Oh. All right. Do I have a motion to adjourn? Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Meeting adjourned.